All right, in this video, I'm gonna go over solutions to the vectors exercise. As with all these exercises, I strongly encourage you to go through and attempt all of them yourself first. Links to the exercises, links to all the other video content and material uh, is available for download for free. There's a link in the description of this video. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click in this top section. I'm gonna reset everything back to zero, reset to the formatting that I like. Control enter is my shortcut. You don't really see anything happen because I didn't have any code in the command window, but if I did, uh, it would now be erased and I've run this section. Display the value 23 by indexing into vector one. So here's vector one right here. You can see the values that are in this vector and I wanna display out the 23. When I say by indexing, what I mean is I want to get access to that 23 by specifying the position of the 23. What is the position? Well, the two is at position one, two, three, four, five, six. It's in the sixth position. So I'm gonna put a six right in there and that's gonna give me 23. So control enter, I run this section and my brain is in the wrong programming language uh, and it's not square brackets, it's parentheses. Sorry about that. Let's try it again. There we go, there's the 23 right there. If you are familiar with any of the C languages or Java, for example, you're probably gonna make some mistakes in MATLAB. Indexing is done with parentheses. Indexing also starts at index one as opposed to zero. It's just something to get used to, but if you're new to programming and you're doing MATLAB as your first language, just know indexing is with parentheses and the first index is index one. So whenever I use the word indexing, I'm saying get a value or change a value by specifying its position or its index within the vector. Now I can also clean this up a little bit by putting a display around it. I may be lazy about that at certain points in time, but there's the display version. And instead of saying ANS equals, it just says 23, displays the result. All right, display the first value in the vector. As I just mentioned, what I want is the value at position uh, one, not at position zero or anything else. So there's the first value, number seven. If I try and put in a zero, I instead get this error here. Array indices must be positive integers or logical values. Scrolling on down, create a new vector named V with the following values in it. All right, no problem, V equals, and then square brackets, and then inside the square brackets, and you can separate these with spaces or with commas or with both, but I kind of actually prefer commas personally. So there is one way to create that vector. And it displays out like this. It's telling you what column each value is in uh, and it's displaying that horizontally there um, and it wraps around, which is a little bit awkward to read. And it's not any better if we use a display. Uh, it's pretty much just the same thing. But one thing that you can do is put a little apostrophe after it and then it'll display it transposed. So instead of horizontally, it'll display it vertically. Now, if you already had it displayed vertically, it would then display horizontally. The transpose basically just swaps all your row and column values. And we'll talk more about transpose later, but I do think that's easier to read. So replace the seven in vector one with an eight. So this seven right here, we wanna replace it with an eight. The way we do this is we index into the vector at the position of the seven. So it's currently at position four. And we do that on the left side of an assignment statement of one of these equal signs. We assign the value of eight to that position instead. And then if we display out vector one, we will see that that seven has been replaced with an eight. And we can use the transpose trick to make it easier to read. And there's the uh, no longer a seven, now it's an eight. Create a column vector with even numbers two through 10, then display the length using the length function. There's a variety of ways to do this. It didn't specify what the name of the variable should be, so I'm just gonna use V, uh, column vector with the even numbers two through 10. So one way to do it is instead of separating our numbers with a comma or a space, we separate them with semicolons. If I run that, there are my values. Another way that I could do this is I could separate them with commas and then put the apostrophe for the transpose on the end and that will give me the exact same result. I'll rerun it right now, and you can't even see the difference. It looks the exact same. 
display the results using uh, length. So display the length of the function, so disp, and then a function named length, and inside the parentheses, v. We run it, and there's that length five right there. Let me suppress v itself with a semicolon, and there's our length, length five, which is correct. One thing that's confusing about MATLAB compared to other languages is that functions and indexing both use parentheses. So here I'm saying display what's inside of this set of parentheses. And then this is saying give me the length of what's inside this set of parentheses, scrolling up. Whereas this is saying give me the value in the vector at position four. It's a subtly different thing, and the difference is Vector one is a variable containing, in this case, numeric information. Disp and length are not variables. They are functions. They are actions that can be taken. Display out whatever's in the parentheses. Give me the length of whatever's in these parentheses. It's the difference between a noun and a verb. Vector one is a noun. It is a thing. It has information. Display and length are verbs. Perform an action and get a result or display a result. Which of the following creates a three row by one column vector? There are two correct answers. Now one thing you can do is you can actually just run all of these. So I could just click in this section, do control enter, and sort of see what my results are. Now three rows, one column is vertical. Right? So this last one, this is correct. Three rows, first row, second row, third row, one column. So D is one of our correct answers. And without even looking at the results in the command window, this is our other one. So separating with semicolons is gonna be one way to separate information vertically. Another way is to just literally write it out vertically. Both of these are going to be one row, three columns, B and C, because of the way they are written, separated by commas or blank spaces. Continuing on down, which of the following creates a two row by three column matrix? There are two correct answers. Again, we could run it and see but let's just evaluate it visually. So this right here is actually all one row because these are all separated by commas or spaces. I would not recommend mixing and matching commas and spaces like as is done here. I would be consistent if I were you, but that's what this does. Same thing here. This is all just one row. So the correct answers are C and D. First row, one, two, three. Second row, four, five, six. And I prefer this format right here because it's very visually obvious what the organization of the information is in those two rows, three columns. Create a vector with values from 20 to 90 in increments of five, so 20, 25, 30, and so on. I would recommend that you do this with what's called intervals. I'm just gonna name my vector vector, vector equals, and then 20 colon 90. This will create a vector of values from 20 to 90, but the increment or the step size will be one, which is not exactly what I want. So I'm gonna adjust this. This is not my final solution. I'm gonna display my vector with uh, an, a transpose, display it vertically, just to show you what this would look like. All right, great. So it goes from 20 to 90, but not quite the way I want it to go. I want it to go step size or increment or increase by five. I want the difference between each value to be five. To do that, instead of doing 20 colon 90, I just do 20 colon 5 colon 90, run it again. Now we've got 20 to 90 separated by fives. So this is just a standard format for doing this sort of thing, for getting values that are separated by a common amount. The starting value, how much to increase or decrease by, and then the final value to stop at. Create a vector of six evenly spaced values between 33 and 66. This is saying, that we want to start at 33 and end at 66, but we want six total values and we want them all to be evenly spaced. It's not telling us that it wants six to be the difference between each number. So for this, we need a different tool. We don't want to use intervals with the colon notation. We want to use a function named linspace. I'm just going to name my vector a for simplicity, and I'm going to say a equals linspace, and then I use my starting number, my ending number, and how many total numbers I want, and that should be my result. I will display it out with a transpose and run it now. It would be a little bit tricky for me to figure out what is the difference needed between all these values to make them evenly spaced, but MATLAB will calculate it for me using the linspace function here. It's also a little confusing because the starting number goes first, the ending number comes next, and 
the total number of values that you want comes last. Scrolling on down. Create a vector of values between 33 and 66 with a step size, aka increment, of 9. Okay, so I don't want 9 total values. I want as many values as it takes to have a step size or increment of 9. I'm going to use intervals, or the colon notation in this one. So I'll name my vector b just to be different. 33 colon 9 colon 66. And then I'll display out b transpose. Great. And there are my values right there. Notice that the 66 is not actually included because you can't reach 66 by adding 9 to 33 repeatedly. And that's okay. That's how this one works. Create a vector of four evenly spaced values between 12 and 97. Since it says evenly spaced, that means we want to use linspace. Now intervals also generate evenly spaced values, but linspace is used when we want a specific number of evenly spaced values. Linspace, the starting number, the ending number, and then how many total numbers we want, and I'll display it transposed. Great, and there we go. There's our four numbers, evenly spaced. What's the spacing? I don't know, but diff can tell me if I really want to know what the spacing is. Oh, it turns out it's 28.3 repeating. All right, the next question comes from a Coursera course, Introduction to Programming with MATLAB by Vanderbilt University. You can find this online. It's a free online course on Coursera. Uh, it's, it's pretty good. You're not going to learn anything particularly different than what you'd learn in my videos or my class, but some of my questions are going to come from that course. So here's the question here. We borrowed $1,000 at a 10% annual interest rate. If we did not make a payment for two years, assuming there's no penalty for non-payment, how much do we owe now? So we just want to apply 10% to 1,000 over the course of two years. And we want to put it in a variable called debt. And we should get uh, 1,210 at the end. So let's see how to do this. Okay, so we borrowed 1,000, 10% annual interest rate. So there's a few ways to set it up. I'm gonna say debt equals 1,000. And I'm gonna say rate equals zero point, no, no, I'm gonna do actually 1.10. Uh, 1 so uh, the 10% right there, it's 110% because of course we keep our original debt and then we have extra debt applied to it. And so our debt after one year is going to be simply debt times rate. And then our debt after a second year, well, we just apply this again. We just do debt times rate again. And so then we display our debt at the end of those two years, and we get that 1,210 or 1,210, just as expected. Now, if you're aware of other formulas for the calculation of debt, great. There are many other ways to calculate this. I wanted to keep it very, very simple, and so I just repeated the same calculation twice. You can definitely do this with exponents. For example, this. We're really just multiplying a debt times a rate and then multiplying again, scrolling on down. I want to create a vector of multiples of 5 from 0 to 100, including 100. Which of the following does so? And you're, you know, encouraged to always test out the code, but let's see if we can just look at it and evaluate it. Is this going to give me values from 0 to 100, uh, all the multiples of 5? Yes, it is. This one is not. This is going to give me 5 total values, evenly spaced, from 0 to 100. This one is just going to literally give me the numbers 0, 5, and 100, so that's not correct. This one is poorly formatted. I'm not even sure it works. Uh, let's see what happens when we copy it over to our command window here. Yeah, it gives me a zero. Uh, that's not what I wanted there. This is just a wrong order. So A is correct for this one. I want a vector of seven evenly spaced numbers starting with eight and ending with 73, which of the following does so. So for this right away, I want a total of seven evenly spaced numbers. I'm not told what the spacing has to be, just that I want that many. Linspace is the way to go. We want the linear spacing, starting at eight, ending at 73, seven total numbers. None of these others give us what we want. All right, for my class, this is the following is supplementary, but I'm gonna go through it in the YouTube video anyway. And I'm starting off with some examples that you don't need to uh, write any code for. So linspace right here gives us values from 4 to 14, three total values. Uh, so if I run this, right, there are my three total values. Now log space is a different function. So log space, if I go 0 to 3, gives me these results. How interesting. So the results themselves are separated by multiplication of 10, by times 10. 
What this is saying here is start out with 10 to the 0, go to 10 squared, and give me three total values separated by a multiplication of the same value. Lin space gives me values separated by addition, in this case by plus 5. Log space is going to give you a vector of values separated by multiplication, and it's always going to be multiplication by the same number. In this case it was 10, but in other cases it'll be a different number. Same with lin space, right? In this case, the separation is plus 5, but in other cases we saw it could be plus 1 or plus 4 or 6, plus 6.6 6 or whatever. Scrolling on down. We don't put in the number we want to start with. We put in the number, and then log space is going to raise 10 to the power of that number. So if you want to start with 1, you put in 0, because 10 to the 0 is 1. If you want to end at 100, you put in 2, because 10 squared is 100. Scrolling down. This is the same example as above, but it's written a little bit differently. I'm going to run this code. All right, I get 1, 10, and 100 again. But I really want to emphasize that aspect of the first number is the start, second number is the finish, third number is the count of how many values you're going to get. In that respect, it's the same as lin space. Continuing on down. So this expression right here says, give me six values, so six total values, exponentially spaced, that means spaced by multiplication, from 0 0.01 to 1,000. Now, how 0 0.01 and 1,000, where'd that come from? All I see is a negative 2 and a 3. Well, 10 to the negative 2 power is 0 0.01. 10 cubed is 1,000. So I run this code, and there are my six values. I want a vector of the following values, 10 to 100,000. Which of the following does so? Now, obviously, it's got to be log space. The correct answer is actually D, not C. Don't make that mistake, right? I want to start at 10, so I put in 1. 10 to the 1 is 10. I want to end at 100,000. 10 to the 5th is 100,000. I want five total values, so I put a 5 in at the very end. And of course, you can always test it out. I should transpose it, though, to make it easier to read. All right, there we go. All right, now you try it. What do you need to put in to go from 0 0.1 to 10,000? All right, well, v equals log space. I want to start at 0 0.1. That's the same as 10 to the negative 1 power. I want to go up to 10,000. That's the same as 10 to the 4th. And I want how many total values? 6. All right, and there it is, transposed to show those results. Now, finally, right? Log space does work with other values than powers of 10, otherwise it wouldn't be very useful. Suppose I want four logarithmically spaced values between 2 and 10. Well, now it's a little bit trickier, right? Here I say, okay, 10 to the this power equals 2, and 10 to the 1 equals 10, so I can put in log space of 0 0.301, whatever, whatever, to 1 and four total values, and run it, now I have some extra text on here, and I get my result, right? That's my first result right here. And the values are separated by multiplying by 1.71. So here I start with 2, I multiply by 1.71, I get the next number in the sequence. I multiply that by 1.71, I get the next number in the sequence. Okay, so they're all separated by the same multiple. But the real question is, how do you figure out this number? How do we figure out that that's what we needed to start with 2? Scrolling down, one thing you can do is take the log base 10 of 2. So there's that same number, that number that I used as an exponent. So log base 10 of 2 tells me what I need to use as the starting value to actually get a 2. And this is where the name log space comes in, because logarithms are related to this. Log 10 is a built-in MATLAB function. It takes the logarithm base 10 of the number in the parentheses. So suppose I want nine total values logarithmically spaced between 8 and 42. I could put my start as the log base 10 of my starting number, 8, my ending, my finish, as log base 10 of 42, and then get the log space of the start, the finish, and I want nine total values. So I run it. My first value is 8, my last is 42. These are all spaced the same by multiplication. Now, what is that multiplication value? Well, we'd have to sort of figure that out, which we could do. For example, I could take this and divide by 8. Okay, so it looks like if we just keep multiplying by this number, we'll get the next number in the sequence. 
So for example, 18.33. So what if we take 18.33 and we multiply by this number, we should get 22.552. And there we go. Or uh, there's slight rounding error. Because of how many decimal places I'm displaying, or more accurately, not displaying, uh, there is more accuracy to these numbers that I was not capturing, so I didn't quite get the right answer, but I'm, on, I'm in the ballpark, and that is how I would figure it out. I could change my format to long or long G, uh, and then see more of these decimal places if I wanted to, but I'll leave that as an exercise for you. Scrolling down. Now you try it, create a vector of four logarithmically spaced values between 20 and 80. All right, so another way that I can do this is I can say log space, log base 10 of my starting number, 20, comma, log base 10 of my ending number, 40, and then I want four total values. And there are my numbers. But we can display that a little bit more organized. There we go. There are my numbers right there. And since this is the end of the video, let's do format long and then run it again. And now we see a, a lot more accuracy in our numbers. All right, so we see all these decimal places here. 